let's start with the first part. Who needs uh, uh, public Wi-Fi? And you may be surprised to find out a, lo a lot of businesses do provide public Wi-Fi. Uh, we can find free internet access in many locations. We know about motels, hotels, resorts, retail, schools. Well, uh, there are gyms, hair salons, airports, restaurants, coffee bars. Uh, clinics, uh, churches, municipal offices, libraries. Libraries are very important. People go there to, to get internet access. Uh, shopping malls, apartment buildings, sports events, auto dealerships. Anywhere that, that uh, the public go, then uh, there is a, a, a free Wi-Fi service. Uh, you may wonder why a free Wi-Fi service when everybody has uh, uh, a mobile phone and can get internet but the fact is that um, uh, you cannot get 5g in all locations especially inside buildings uh, in remote locations and so there is a demand for uh, public internet uh, we also have uh, on the the right hand column paid wi-fi uh, the subscription services for what we call mobile broadband which is wi-fi that's available on a mobile device uh, we see that at airports uh, we can buy uh, the service uh, online paying with a credit card we can buy vouchers and we see entities such as internet cafes not not so common in the united states but very popular around the world where uh, people go and, and pay for an hour's access to the internet <clears throat> the locations which are uh, probably uh, outside the range of uh, 4G and 5G, marinas, campgrounds, RV parks charge for the internet service. You pay for the internet service on aircraft and on cruise ships. And th there's a, a halfway point in the middle where you may get part of the internet service for free and you may pay, pay for the service. For example, some hotels uh, will give a free slow service low speed service and then charge for a high speed service airports if you're familiar with uh, international airports or nat even national airports they, they may give you 30 minutes of free access and then charge you at hourly rates uh, trade shows uh, also uh, they provide internet access for uh, people on booths but they do charge for visitors uh, aircraft wi-fi uh, there are some airlines now offering free Wi-Fi for frequent flyers and other uh, applications like student accommodation may well be data limited. And after that, the student would pay or uh, multi-unit buildings where the, the uh, cost of the Wi-Fi is included in the condo fee. What are the characteristics of public Wi-Fi? Well, they, they have one common feature, which is uh, the the hotspot Wi-Fi is not encrypted. That that allows anyone to connect to the the service. Uh, unlike any business Wi-Fi, which has WPA2 encryption, or even in some newer installations, WPA3 encryption. Uh, the reason is that uh, if you want anyone to to use their device to connect to it. Uh, if you're going to encrypt it, you have to post the, the password uh, on a big sign. And so there really is no point in having encryption. And that is why uh, the Wi-Fi hotspot is considered unsafe, because you can put a hacking tool, uh, such as a tool called a sniffer, on a, a computer and capture messages. And, and companies like Apple regard this as a risk, and they make it difficult to connect to an encrypted Wi-Fi. Uh, it's always a good idea to use a, a VPN when accessing a public Wi-Fi. And uh, there are many situations where Wi-Fi is the only method of access to the internet. For example, international travelers. If you travel internationally, you get to the airport, your phone doesn't have a roaming agreement with uh, the service providers. And so you're obliged to use the Wi-Fi. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, wilderness locations uh, outside the reach of the uh, 5G networks. Uh, uh, Wi-Fi is the only option there. Now, there are many, many businesses that have installed public internet services. Here's a few of the brands. Um, if you walk into any one of these brands, you're going to be able to get Wi-Fi access, like a, anything from a Dunkin' Donuts, a Marriott, an Airbnb. Uh, the Airbnb organization requires that the host provide uh, 
the Wi-Fi for guests. Uh, I mentioned uh, uh, mobile broadband service providers. Here are some of them. They charge a monthly subscription for uh, uh, the Wi-Fi service. You may have heard of some of these. Boingo, for example, uh, is available in international airports. If you go to a, uh, an international airport, for example, like Miami International, you might get uh, uh, 30 minutes for free and then you're charged uh, uh, on an hourly basis for the internet service. Uh, on the other hand, if you have a subscription with Boingo, you can log in with your subscription and get uh, internet access through that. Uh, and so there, there are several of these companies, all quite successful, that are, uh, are charging customers on a monthly basis for the uh, for the uh, uh, Wi-Fi subscription service. And in turn, they have uh, agreements with Wi-Fi providers who will then uh, interface with their API to allow that uh, customer to connect. Now, when we look at the, the market segmentation, uh, we, we divide it into four segments, four types. At the bottom left is what you're probably familiar with the business Wi-Fi internet hotspots. That's the hotspots you find in hotels, in coffee bars, uh, in, the, in the gym, and basically somebody connects a, a wireless access point to a network, uh, doesn't encrypt it so anyone can log in and get internet access. They may put a, a login page there as well. Uh, we have uh, another three types of market segments up the top left managed service providers. Uh, these are businesses that provide uh, a complete IT solution for a, a company. It could be a hotel, it could be a, a sports stadium. And so uh, they might uh, provide the, the Wi-Fi installation, charge the, the customer for providing and managing that installation, and may even uh, charge the end users uh, by uh, who want to pay for the internet service and share that share that with uh, the the, uh, the people who want to use the service and managed service providers might be the people who are uh, installing uh, internet Wi-Fi in airports for example maybe the the airport IT department doesn't want to get involved with that and so they bring in a managed service provider to do that down at the bottom right we have systems integrators this is a different market where uh, the Wi-Fi uh, is part of a larger system. Uh, an example of this is a hotel management system, what we call a property management system, like Oracle, Opera, for example, uh, where the uh, management system is integrated with the Wi-Fi uh, so that when the, the hotel uh, guest checks in, uh, the uh, management system generates the access code, gives that to the guest, printed on the on the paper that the guest gets, uh, activates that guest on the Wi-Fi, and then when the guest checks out, uh, the the uh, management system removes that guest from the Wi-Fi. Uh, the management system uh, has several options, whereby a, a frequent visitor to the uh, hotel, uh, somebody who's on the preferred guest program can get faster internet, for example, when they check in. Or they may have a, a code that allows them to check into any hotel and get faster internet. Uh, and so what the systems integrators are doing is installing uh, a software such as Oracle Opera, a PMS system in a hotel, and then building out the interfaces to APIs. Uh, so the the, the Wi-Fi system will have an API which interfaces with the, the hotel management software. Up at the top right, we have ISPs and community services. The, these are internet service providers who uh, provide maybe a mobile broadband service or a fixed broadband service. Uh, and they're uh, providing services opportunistically uh, where there is uh, little or no alternative. Uh, in the U.S., we, we have pretty good coverage, uh, but outside the U.S., not so. Uh, a lot of people in rural areas don't have access to the Internet. And so uh, ISPs will will provide uh, this, this access, usually in the form of a mobile broadband, so that people can connect with mobile devices. So those are the four 
segments where uh, the the uh, Wi-Fi services are offered. Now, let's look first at the business Wi-Fi internet hotspots. Uh, I'm sure you're all familiar with this, uh, whether it's a motel, an RV park, a, a retail, a library. Uh, the business has a computer network, hopefully firewall from the internet. And, and so the business installs uh, a wireless access point uh, that provides the internet access for the guest. And we hope that it has a firewall to, to prevent the guest getting access to the business network. But well, that's an essential part, really. So uh, it's not only a wireless access point, but uh, uh, maybe a, a hotspot controller that has uh, wireless, that has a login page, and has a, a firewall to uh, protect the business network. Uh, larger systems require a more uh, sophisticated uh, set of, of uh, controls. Um, if we're looking at larger hotels, resorts, trade shows, airports, that type of thing, we're looking at uh, maybe VLAN uh, management for multi-use wireless networks so that uh, we, we have a wireless network which can be used by not only visitors but also by staff and, and other, other segments that uh, uh, within the area. We're looking for multi-tier login, uh, maybe optional credit card billing, maybe as I mentioned in the case of an airport where you might want to provide free 30 minutes every 24 hours and then charge for access and also accept the, the credentials of a service provider. Uh, we are looking for multi-WAN uh, for higher reliability. Uh, that's important because a, a lot of uh, hotel franchises now require the, the franchise owners to uh, provide uh, a dual WAN connection for uh, the guest network because it's very important that the guests have continuity for the internet access. Uh, we want uh, cloud management so that uh, managed service providers can can outsource the the, the management of this uh, network and take that away from the the uh, uh, hotel management. Uh, we're looking for APIs for integration with third party software such as the property management system that I described to you. And finally, a firewall to protect the business network that's uh, PCI DSS compliant, that's payment, payment card industry data security standard. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a, in a few minutes. Managed service providers uh, have some sort of central facility where they're managing service for a, a number of different clients. And so uh, they uh, probably have installed the, the infrastructure. And so they're uh, then managing remotely that infrastructure charging the client for a fee. This works very well for clients who have no IT department because they're able to get a headache and pass it on to somebody else. And so if there are problems with, with customers, customer support is needed, the managed service provider will handle that. Now, this is why the managed service provider needs a cloud management system so that uh, uh, the, the uh, business can manage a number of different customers remotely. Uh, the management service provider uh, cloud system uh, would be multi-site so that they can they can manage different customers independently and they, they get visibility of each customer. Uh, and so the, the cloud system requires a certain degree of sophistication to allow the managed service provider to do this. The cloud service uh, probably would also require APIs so that the, the uh, the other software management systems that the, the uh, managed service provider is using can be integrated with the cloud uh, for the uh, for the public Wi-Fi. Systems integrators, uh, well, the, the the most visible are the hotel systems integrators, where you check into the hotel and uh, you're given the the room key and you're given the the internet code to log into the internet, and that's activated. Uh, if you're part of the loyalty program, then you may get preferential internet access, that, that you may get a, a faster data speed. And that is done with the, the integration between the, the property management system 
and the Wi-Fi management system through APIs. Uh, this diagram shows that interface, so the, the property management system might be a server on site. It may be a remote server which interfaces through a cloud management system. And so uh, that will uh, generate the access code, send that over to the the uh, controller using the API, and then when the guest checks out, remove that access code from the controller. Uh, reservation systems are all very popular in other forms of hospitality, not just hotels. Campground reservation systems, RV park reservation systems. RV is big business in the United States. Uh, outside the USA, campgrounds are very popular. Uh, caravan parks are very popular in Europe. And so all these have reservation systems that uh, uh, connect up to the Wi-Fi because everybody needs Wi-Fi. If you're going to a, a campground, you're definitely going to have to have Wi-Fi to upload all those selfies. Very important. So the, uh, the hotel management is going to decide exactly how the Wi-Fi is implemented. And, and they have a choice. Uh, the, the common method is to generate uh, an access code when the guest logs in, maybe the, the room number and the first three letters of the guest name uh, and send that code to the gateway, but not necessarily. Maybe uh, the, the uh, uh, PMS system is going to request a code from the gateway and then pass that code to the client and then tell the gateway to make that code active. Uh, when the guest checks out, tell the gateway to to inactivate that code. And so it really depends on the the hotel management how they want to implement that process. Uh, the uh, chains such as uh, Hilton and Marriott have a standardized procedure for that. Uh, the a lot of application software. This is uh, the the Oracle Hospitality Integration Platform. Uh, uh, it was called Opera before Oracle acquired it. Now it's the Hospitality Integration Platform. Uh, this is probably used in getting on for 50% of hotels around the world. Uh, and so this is the most frequently interfaced uh, software. You can see that the uh, Oracle system has many types of APIs. They're not only interfacing with the, the Wi-Fi, they have interfaces with suppliers, for example, linen suppliers, uh, food suppliers. Uh, all, all the different points of contact that the uh, hospitality management system will have. Uh, there are also uh, several tens of other PMS software products that are used by hotels around the world. And uh, many of them also have APIs that would integrate with third party systems. The ISP and community service segment uh, consists of many uh, smaller businesses who provide uh, fixed broadband, which is a connection to a, to a home or office, and also mobile broadband for mobile devices. The fixed broadband uh, would use an encrypted Wi-Fi connection, whereas the mobile broadband would be unencrypted. In the United States, there are several thousand uh, ISPs who provide these types of services. And it may be that an ISP, for example, is providing uh, a fixed broadband connection to homes, but also providing a mobile broadband connection within customers. The, the ISP might have hotel customers, and so uh, the ISP would, would uh, uh, manage the mobile broadband service inside that hotel uh, as a managed service provider. And uh, maybe the, the ISP has a shopping mall customer and would provide the service inside the shopping mall. So uh, the ISP can also assume uh, the role of a managed service provider. Uh, outside the USA, this type of uh, business is very, very popular, uh, especially in rural areas where there is very little internet coverage. Uh, a lot of third party suppliers uh, provide mobile broadband. People are not necessarily willing to, to pay for uh, a monthly subscription, but they are happy to pay uh, maybe a daily rate for internet access to, to use that internet service when they need it. And so uh, this is a, a very important area. A, a, lot of, uh, uh, a lot of products such as uh, ubiquity products are sold into this segment. 
And we, we can elaborate on that um, by building a cellular Wi-Fi network. So we can provide mobile broadband uh, and have many antennas uh, throughout a, a town, a village, uh, whereby a customer can connect to one of the antennas and then move to a different antenna and stay connected to the internet for the duration of the access code. So a cellular Wi-Fi network is also a, a popular method of, of providing uh, Wi-Fi. Each antenna can be connected to a different ISP. Unlike you might think it's similar to uh, an office environment where you have multiple uh, uh, access points connected back to one internet connection. Well, in this case, it's multiple access points, each connected to a different uh, ISP. And so the, the cloud management system manages the roaming, manages the handoff from one antenna to the next, and very similar to your mobile phone system. So what are the desirable characteristics for a public internet service? We've seen some of the applications. Uh, well, we want a product that's simple to install, has a, an intuitive uh, UI, easy to understand, and minimum specialist skills and so the products we find for this market uh, are arranged over that scale from the very easy to the very difficult uh, we want a product that works with any type of wi-fi and network equipment we want to be able to authenticate users using one of several different methods so we want options we want to uh, monitor the network access and use we want to be able to supervise users identify uh, access attempts which we don't want, we don't allow. We want a firewall. Uh, we want rules to maybe block IP ranges, uh, block routers, block uh, dust traffic, for example, viruses. Uh, we want to maybe block access to specific websites or to website categories. Uh, so this is part of the protection for the network infrastructure to prevent people abusing it. Uh, we want uh, equipment for failure monitoring. We want to be alerted if something fails. If we're providing a public service, then uh, we want to know it fails before we start getting loads of calls from people who are complaining about it. And so, like any any ISP, like uh, your AT and T or any company, they want to know about a failure very quickly before the users complain too much, so we can get it repaired. We want uh, multi WAN with load balance and failover which means that uh, uh, we, we have access from maybe two ISPs. So if one fails, and that's usually the weakest link, then everything switches over to the other. When we have two ISPs, we can share the data traffic over both ISPs. If uh, one fails, then we fail over and all the traffic goes to one ISP. We would like port forwarding. We'd like to have remote device configuration. So we need port forwarding so that we can access those devices. We'd like to have a multi-segmented network using VLANs so that we can uh, determine how we're going to use the Wi-Fi network. Maybe we're going to have different types of users. Uh, we want a cloud service for remote configuration, support, for monitoring, reporting. So basically, uh, we're, we've got all the features there that we would like from uh, a small installation into a very large installation. Uh, login page customization is something that most businesses want. They want to customize the, the, the service they provide, and that includes fast food to uh, high-end resorts. Uh, we want to be able to, to uh, use that login page as a means of communication with the user, maybe even to offer advertising space to third parties. That's very common, for example, in, in uh, marinas, where you get a, a number of different businesses inside the marina that provide different services like engine repair, uh, radio installation, that type of thing. And so they want to uh, have their advertisement on the marina login page. Now, authentication methods uh, really depend on the type of application. And we, we want to have a product which allows us to, to choose uh, the authentication method. User authentication, maybe uh, we want the user to agree to terms and conditions. Maybe we want the user to enter an access code that we provide. And that's how we're going to restrict access to the, 
the authorized people. Uh, maybe we're going to sell access codes online using a credit card. Uh, maybe we're going to ask the customer for specific contact information to allow access. And maybe we're going to have uh, multiple uh, options where we provide free access for a certain time and then we uh, have the customer purchase access. Uh, maybe we want a free access mode where a condominium can provide access but uh, control that access through uh, a firewall. Uh, one of the important controls is to divide up the bandwidth so uh, each customer gets a certain uh, amount of bandwidth so that we can share uh, the bandwidth from the ISP between all, all users. Uh, we maybe want device authentication. We want to uh, identify the device through the MAC address or even have a, uh, a login code using the MAC address. <clears throat> share one connection between many users. I was just uh, talking about that. Well, one of the problems when we connect many people to uh, an internet service provider is a problem called network congestion. Uh, if you're familiar with that, uh, what happens is that when many people are connecting to one circuit, uh, then uh, many people are opening many sessions. Uh, each session has uh, a certain characteristic uh, through the, the TCP IP protocol. Uh, and so as more people connect, uh, the response time increases. So the person is waiting longer and longer until a point where the, the uh, TCP protocol retries the transmission. And then you get network collapse. That's network congestion because a number of different devices retry at the same time. Uh, because the delay gets too high. And so what happens is everyone is disconnected from the network at that point. Well, that's obviously a situation we want to avoid. And so what we have to do is divide up that, that uh, available bandwidth between uh, many users. And so we would allocate a, a maximum download and upload speed per user. We, we reckon to allocate maybe two megabits per user. So if we have 50 users would like a 100 megabit circuit, we can go above that. Uh, and in fact, many, many businesses do. Also, we're talking about concurrent users. So if we have a, a hotel with 100 rooms, maybe we only have 50 concurrent users maximum. We don't have 100 users or more. Uh, and so we would pick the the uh, the number which gives us uh, uh, a good performance for each user, but avoids uh, uh, a situation where we lose connection to the internet. Uh, we also want to stop abuse, and so uh, a computer, for example, with a denial of service virus, can bring down a network, and so we want to block those computers. Uh, maybe we want to set data limits to uh, restrict the transfer of large files. Uh, maybe we want to set time limits to restrict internet use. Maybe we want to block high volume websites such as Netflix, for example, data streaming websites or like YouTube. So these are all considerations we have to look at when we're providing a, a public internet service. I mentioned redundancy. Uh, that is having uh, multiple uh, WAN ports uh, that uh, allow us to uh, not only share the load, but also fail over in the event of a, 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 an outage. So our primary connection might be a fiber ISP, but we also have secondary connections, maybe a 5G ISP, could be a satellite ISP or a WISP with a point-to-point -point antenna. And so if the main circuit fails, then all the traffic is diverted to the backup circuit. And so we maintain connectivity for the users. And the availability really depends on the location. Maybe we can get two circuits from ISPs. Obviously, we don't want two circuits from the same ISP because if one circuit fails, the other one will certainly fail. Okay, because somebody dug up a cable in the road, for example. And so we, we'd like two different ISPs, possibly using two different mediums. So uh, a fiber connection and a 5G connection would be uh, ideal uh, so that we get two different providers, both high-speed connections. 
dual use networks this this is a, a very important aspect when we're providing different services to different people if we have a hotel uh, wi-fi network we, we have two types of users we, we have the guests who want to access the internet we also have staff who need to access the back office systems housekeeping uh, who are going around room to room uh, and they need to make a note of what's being consumed out of the refrigerator and so they do that with a, a wi-fi device that, that talks back to the the uh, management system the pms system and so we want a, a network uh, whereby we have two ssids one is unencrypted one is encrypted uh, the uh, encrypted ssid has a vlan connection which is uh, routed back to the the back office server systems and so when the the staff connect they get an ip from the back office server uh, when the guest connects the guest gets an ip from the the controller and gets a connection to the the internet but the the guest cannot get a connection to the back office system because it's firewall from the guest and so we save a lot of money because we install one wireless network in a hotel that, that is dual use and our controller manages that use. <clears throat> Multi-level login, um, I mentioned this, uh, airport is a typical application, 30 minutes of, of free access, then we charge the customer. The alternative is the customer has a credential for a, a service like Boingo and so can can enter with that credential. Maybe the airport has several different alternative uh, uh, entry points where uh, different credentials can be used to get the internet access. Uh, and so typically uh, the, the free access will be for a limited time and repeated only every 24 hour period. And then uh, there would be an op uh, several different paid access options depending on the agreements that the uh, the airport has with suppliers this also applies to other types of environments for example like a trade show where you would set up a, a wi-fi system maybe even a temporary wi-fi system uh, where you would have uh, people who are renting booths you would give them access to the internet the the management uh, would want access to the internet and then visitors would want access to the internet uh, if you've been to trade shows you know it's impossible to get 5g access because there are thousands of people trying to connect and so the wi-fi is the only viable alternative but probably the the trade show organizer is going to charge for the wi-fi especially if it's the miami beach convention center so these are uh, characteristics w which we want to build out in our systems mobile wi-fi is, is something uh, where there are a, a number of businesses offering this service and so if you have some type of event and you need wi-fi you can call in one of these businesses typically uh, what they do is is connect to a 5g tower uh, as the backhaul they may use uh, uh, antennas like yagi antennas to connect over a longer distance and get a faster data rate you can also use a satellite antenna like starlink you b power the whole system with, on a battery and you have uh, uh, antennas with the, the guest access control uh, and you provide the type of internet service that the, the, you're contracted to provide. Maybe it's a free service, maybe it's a service where people can access with a code. So you have to generate codes and give those to, to the event organizer. And who might want this? Well, uh, events like 5K runs, for example, uh, want to set up a, a mobile Wi-Fi because uh, uh, there are many, many people probably would overload the, the 5G tower. Uh, so you can see, you, you can imagine that, you know, uh, an event on Miami Beach. If you, if you go to Miami Beach, you'll see uh, uh, events that are set up on the beach uh, and they need Wi-Fi. And so they set up a temporary uh, connection like this. Uh, we want to monitor devices for failure. <coughs> excuse me we want to monitor not only the the controller but we want to monitor the wireless access points that connect to the controller uh, if we're providing a, a service for the public the public will complain if the service breaks and so we want to be able to address this as quickly as possible 
We don't want people calling us complaining. So we want alerts if any component in the system fails so that we can activate our, our tech support people and, and fix the problem as quickly as possible. So we'd probably have backup equipment. Uh, the, the alert message will tell us which equipment failed and where it's located. And so we go there, replace that equipment, get things back online very quickly. Uh, one, one of the issues that any business which has a point of sale must take care of is protecting the, the point of sale from theft. Uh, the point of sale stores credit card uh, information, and, and that's a target for thieves. So many businesses set up a, a wireless access point that's connected to the same network as the point of sale, and so the point of sale gets hacked. It's very easy to hack a point of sale. Credit card information is stolen, sold on the dark web. So what happens? The credit card company knows exactly where uh, the, the, the credit cards were stolen, so they, they impose financial obligations on the merchant to reimburse them. Maybe the merchant will lose uh, merchant services. Uh, and so the outcome is not good. And so it's very, very important that the, the merchant installs a firewall uh, if installing uh, public Wi-Fi. Uh, the, there's a, uh, the PCI DSS payment card industry data security standard has a section about public Wi-Fi for any business that has a that uh, accepts credit cards, and so uh, they require that the the public Wi-Fi is either connected to a completely separate uh, ISP circuit, or else if it's connected to the business network, it must be connected with the firewall that, that's PCI compliant. And so this is uh, an area where a lot of small businesses are not familiar, but it's essential that they upgrade their, their public Wi-Fi to include a firewall. Uh, internet cafes, I mentioned those, uh, probably not so popular in the USA because everybody has a mobile phone outside the USA, extremely popular. Uh, a point where people can go and get internet access. If you are a traveler, let's say you went on a holiday in Peru, you will also be using internet cafes because your mobile phone has no roaming, uh, you want to send those selfies back to the folks back home. And so you would go along to the Internet Cafe. You'd pay whatever, how many pays us for, for an hour of access. And so the Internet Cafe would have a point of sale system like the one shown, uh, where uh, the, the wireless router has a, a ticket printer connected to it. A tablet is a, a point of sale display. And so uh, the, the printer would be connected to a cash drawer. Uh, so it's very easy to set up, and that can be set up by, by people without any technical skills. Now, I mentioned uh, there are entities who sell uh, vouchers for Internet access. Once again, popular in, in Latin America, Caribbean, uh, people uh, who maybe don't want to pay for uh, a fixed Internet service to the home. It has an expense because you have to install an antenna in the home and you pay a monthly subscription. The alternative is to use your mobile device and buy a voucher. Uh, and so you can buy a, a, a voucher at a, a, for the, you know, the Bank de Genais, the, the place where they sell the newspapers, and that might, may give you one day of internet access. And this is a, a, a fairly easy business to set up. You can use the, the, uh, uh, the cloud system to print out the vouchers, uh, sell those at different points of sale, and uh, you can set up antennas around the city so people can log into one antenna and then move to the next antenna uh, to continue having internet access. The, the voucher code has characteristics like the duration, maximum download upload speeds, maybe maximum uh, data use, and uh, so it, it's a very convenient way for both seller and customer to have internet access. So let's just do a little uh, comparison here, business hotspot versus managed Wi-Fi service. The business hotspot is a, a, a simple application where you provide maybe a, a wireless access point with, with access for the public. Uh, and maybe it's open. Uh, maybe it's got a, a login page, maybe uh, it, 
you you issue codes for access or maybe even you're going to charge for internet use and there are three popular products in this segment the the guest internet the ubiquity unify and the Mikrotik router and and they they vary in in skill level the the guest internet requires no technical skill the ubiquity unify requires a, a moderate technical expertise the Mikrotik router uh, requires a high level of expertise uh, but these are all competing products in the market prices start under a hundred dollars the managed wi-fi is the uh, high end of the business the resorts the the airports large hotels we're looking for cloud management uh, so that the it department can remotely configure and monitor the system uh, we're looking for maybe remote vendor support so that if something breaks the, the vendor will come in and fix it. We're looking for API for integration with software platforms, reliability monitoring, failure alerting, multi one for user reliability. And there are some high end products guest internet, nomadics, RG nets. Typically, they start at the $1,000 mark and uh, go up from there to many thousands of dollars. So, the, the, uh, the popular uh, gateway end of the market. Uh, the guest internet, easy to use, no special knowledge required. They have, there's a range of, of products there. Ubiquity Unify, these are very popular products. Uh, Ubiquity used in many different applications. They have a hotspot feature where you can set up a login page. Uh, you can generate access codes. Not so easy to use. You need uh, certainly a, a little bit of skill training to, to be able to configure this. Uh, there are free upgrades, but no cloud, no support, no manual compared to the guest internet, which is free cloud, free support, free upgrades, free manual. The Mikrotik, uh, the Mikrotik router on its own is a router. It doesn't have any type of hotspot feature. Uh, there are free scripts which you can load onto a router, which configure it as a, as a hotspot controller. Uh, it does have what's called a captive portal. And so you can set up a, a login page. You can even generate access codes uh, for the, the access, but that really has to be done by somebody who's, who's got a pretty high level of skill. And so there are uh, businesses that, that program these and sell them already programmed, but there's no cloud, no upgrades, no support, no manual. Uh, and if you need the configuration changing, then you pay for it. But it's very popular because Mikrotech uh, routers are available everywhere in the world. Uh, and so, uh, it's the maybe the option of choice for, for many people. <clears throat> I, here's a comparison table. I won't go into details, but you can download this afterwards if you want to look into detail. It just gives a, a feature comparison between those three. <clears throat> the guest internet, Ubiquiti Unify, and Mikrotik. It compares the features and, uh, and allows you to make a choice about which product suits your application best. Now the high end, uh, we have guest internet, nomadics, RG nets. There are a few others, but uh, these these uh, are pretty popular. Guest internet has been around a long time. Integrates with uh, uh, PMS systems. Uh, very popular for resorts, for airports, that type of thing. Uh, nomadics, uh, they one of their limitations that they have a three-year product life and they terminate support basically they turn the unit off so you've got to buy a new product every three years but they do have contracts with uh, some of the chains like Hilton and Marriott uh, they they integrate with the the software that uh, Hilton and Marriott use and also I think I IGH uh, and so uh, they, they are uh, important for those groups because uh, uh, they, they integrate perfectly with the systems. They provide support for those systems. And so the, the nomadics is actually uh, works a bit like a, a managed service provider uh, because they're actually selling services as well as the, the product. Uh, and so uh, that takes a headache away from the groups like Hilton Marriott. They don't have to worry about it. RG Nets, uh, based out of Reno, uh, they uh, are very popular with the casino industry in, in uh, Reno, Nevada. Uh, so uh, they uh, have gained uh, a lot of expertise in that area, and uh, they provide uh, not only a product but also uh, managed services for that segment. So 
Las Vegas, all these areas where they have uh, casinos with, with specialized requirements. So they're very popular for that. Uh, and so uh, you can see there's, there's variation in the types of products that are available. Uh, this is a, a, an overview of the guest internet product range. So you can see they go from the uh, the low end to the, the high end systems. And uh, a little summary of the, the guest internet products, ease of use, flexibility, uh, well, fast to install, uh, no limited number of users, easy uh, for users, so reduces customer service, easy to customize. Uh, you can display business information during login. You can decide how you want to provide the service, free charge, partial. Uh, you can have dual use Wi-Fi with VLAN configurations, throughputs up to a gigabit, up to 10 gigabit special order. Uh, you can build the cellular Wi-Fi networks, free cloud service, lifetime software, and online technical support. The uh, protection and control is an important part of the, the higher end systems protect the business from hackers because hackers certainly want to uh, get access to, to business systems. Uh, we want to block computers with viruses, uh, prevent the sharing of copyrighted files, set the maximum data speed to share bandwidth, maybe set a maximum data limit, filter websites of indi individual or categories. Uh, we want to monitor failures with alerting and then we want uh, several different login methods and uh, agree to the terms and conditions, request access codes, uh, request uh, user information, uh, free access with firewall rules, online credit card charges, and, and several others. Uh, uh, let me just give you a quick uh, bit of information about Internet Technology Answers. Uh, we provide uh, internet consulting services and cyber security consulting services. So uh, we work with different companies that, that looking for solutions they want to deploy uh, services uh, in a number of different environments using a number of different methods and uh, we help them with that uh, finally one page with my contact information uh, so we have social media sites please follow us on social media you can contact us as well we have a great partnership with flytech and so uh, we can provide you with uh, uh, support for products that Flytech offer. And uh, if you have uh, a need for uh, advice, we can, we can be contacted. We're very happy to provide free advice for people. So that's the end of the presentation. I, I try to do it within a, a limited time frame. Uh, now we come to question time. So if any of you have any questions, please put them in the chat box and uh, Valia will, will check your questions and, and we'll go through them and uh, uh, I'll provide you with answers that you need. So do we, do we have questions already in the chat box, Valia? Uh, no, Jet. Okay, so if any of you have any questions about uh, the information that, that's been presented, uh, please drop them in the chat box. If you think of questions later, then you can contact Flytech or contact uh, our email address there, and uh, we'll be very happy to help you out. Okay. We'll wait a couple of minutes more if anyone has any questions, and then we'll we'll uh, we'll finish the the presentation. Okay. Do you have any any questions coming in, Valia? No, no, John. Um, okay, so there's someone typing, Ignacio. Okay. Oh. Uh, Okay, let's wait. Okay. Yes, Larry, we can have the presentation. Um, I actually uploaded to the meetings file, so it's there. Ignacio is asking, is it possible to have a time matter Wi-Fi connection in a public environment? Is it possible to what? Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. To have a time meter Wi-Fi connection in a public environment, like a shopping mall. Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, you have a number of different options. Uh, one is to uh, give people codes which have a, a certain uh, time limit. Uh, another option is to use the, the, the system that airports use, where 
you give uh, people a certain time for a certain uh, within a certain time frame. So, for example, a, an airport might give uh, one hour, uh, sorry, 30 minute in internet access every 24 hours. Uh, if you're in a shopping mall, maybe you want to give one hour internet access every 24 hours or, or two hour internet access. And so you can set the times uh, and uh, whereby a, a device uh, will have access for a, a period of time. OK. Um, OK, yes, there is another question from Inusa. She's asking, um, in the face of Mac cloning, uh, how do we solve the Mac authentic authentication? That, that depends on the, the, the product. Uh, for example, I was using guest internet products as an example. They do have protection against Mac cloning. Uh, they have various other protections. Obviously, uh, people will try to get free internet access if it's charged. And so, especially with the, the uh, the systems like the voucher sale, the, the internet for Fisher. And so uh, products like Guest Internet ha have a protection. They identify an attempt for Mac cloning. Uh, they identify various other types. Uh, what one is uh, router blocking, where somebody can set up a phone as a router as a, uh, and then allow other people to connect. Well, that can be blocked as well. So. Uh, there are several mechanisms to prevent uh, misuse of the service. It really depends on the product that you install. If you install uh, a hotspot with, a, uh, uh, for example, a Mikrotik router, you're not going to get that. If you install uh, a hotspot with a Ubiquiti Unify, you're not going to get that. They're, those are basic products. If you install a guest internet, then you will get that. There are other products that, that have that type of service as well. Okay. Okay. Um, Ignacio is asking some some other questions. He's asking if is Unify capable of doing time connections? It, it, yeah. Uh, well, you can you can generate codes which are time limited, and so you you can you can set up a login page whereby the user has to enter a code, and that code has a, a, specific, a specific duration, like one hour or or five hours or something like that. So yes, you can set the limit. You don't have the flexibility that you would have with other systems, whereby you can give free access for a certain time and then uh, charge for the access. You don't have that type of flexibility with Unify. Another question from Gaspar, how we can solve the registration for Apple platforms that use randomized uh, media access control? Well, that again depends on, on the equipment. That, that's a, a very frequent issue for uh, uh, public internet because a lot of public internet systems actually register the, the MAC address and use that as a, as a method to, to determine if that has been accessed. So, for example, if somebody uh, with a, a MAC device uh, gets an access code, enters that access code, gets internet access, goes away, and then connects again later, that, that same access code won't work because the MAC address of the device has changed. And so uh, products like Guest Internet handle that by, by uh, having options to change the authentication. And so with the Guest Internet, you can do IP only authentication, uh, whereby uh, a, a device, uh, once it's uh, requested an IP, if it reconnects later, it's going to request the same IP to the DHCP service. Uh, and so you, you identify or recognize the device through that method. So there are other methods to do that as well. But generally speaking, uh, people with uh, Apple devices uh, do have a few problems. It's not only the, the randomized Mac. It's also the issue where Apple doesn't like you connecting to uh, uh, a wireless access point that's not encrypted. And so you, you're going to have to. Uh, answer the question that the device displays, you know, uh, do you really want to connect to this? And it, and it changes with each release of iOS. So, you know, you might have iOS 14 on your phone, you upgrade to iOS 15, and the way it handles public networks is different. Okay. Um, Larry is asking, um, I guess that's for you. Are you going to revamp your products for gigabit speed and IC 
For Wi-Fi, the new trend is AX. Uh, certain, certainly, there's a, a move to uh, constantly provide faster internet circuits. But in the case of uh, most products, they, they work up to gigabit speeds right now. Uh, people are looking at 10 gigabit speeds. And, and uh, I know in the case of uh, guest internet, these are special order right now, but uh, I think probably 2.5 gigabits uh, will, will probably be available soon and, and 10 gigabits. There's not a big demand uh, for anything over a gigabit right now, uh, simply because the, the circuits are not there. Uh, but what, what happened is that uh, the government released a, a lot of money, $45 billion to upgrade the the uh, infrastructure to uh, uh, upgrade a, a lot of internet connections to, to fiber. And so those fiber circuits can be used up to 10 gigabits. The, the standard uh, type of uh, uh, fiber circuit is, is uh, usually a, a 2.5 gigabit down, 1.5 gigabit up, uh, with uh, one gigabit inside the premises over ethernet. Uh, but uh, fiber can be upgraded up to 10 gigabits inside the premises. And uh, a lot of hotels right now are upgrading from maybe 100 megabit DSL, which is probably way too slow for them, up to uh, gigabit fiber. And so they, they need now to upgrade the infrastructure to, to handle gigabit speeds for guests. Uh, but I, I think right now uh, we can get uh, 10 gigabit speeds in some urban locations, but uh, as time progresses, uh, 10 gigabits is going to become more prevalent. Okay. Mm, okay, we don't have more questions. Okay, well, I, I thank you very much. It's great that uh, uh, all of you could join me today for this presentation. Uh, once again, uh, Valia arranged the, the download of the material. You can download it and, and use it and any questions, contact uh, Flytech, contact our email address, and we're very happy to uh, help you out with any questions you might have. And we, we have these presentations every month. So uh, in the month of May, we're going to have a, a, a presentation about uh, uh, the, the latest technologies for networking. So I hope you uh, uh, keep an eye on the, the uh, the announcement for that and join us for that presentation. So thanks very much.